It's the end of the smartphone era. That's it, it's over. Send in the clowns. Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is painfully honest tech. Tech so honest it hurts if this is your first time here. And you want to come back again, I would love it if you do. And if you've been here before, well, thank you again so much. I, I know this is going to surprise you, am going to make a bold claim. As most folks know, and I have talked about some of this on the channel, smartphones in 2018 were not the runaway hits that, that we have come to expect in years gone past. For many years now, the better part of a decade really, the smartphone has been at the top of the tech world, the alpha dog, the tech that gets the most ink. But I'm here to tell you those days are officially over. I don't know what comes next, but with the leak of the pricing for the Galaxy S10 that's coming out later on next month, plus the woes that Apple and Samsung and others have suffered, the end of the smartphone era dominating the tech conversation has ended. The smartphone era reached its pinnacle where innovation and polish met with stability and longevity probably in about 2015. The best phones out there at that time in that year were the iPhone 6S, the Samsung Galaxy Note 5, the Nexus 6P, and the Galaxy 6 and 6 Edge. Up to that point, most Android phones were sort of not at the same level as the iPhone when it came to hardware. A lot of them were kind of plasticky and stuff, but in 2015, they started to catch up. The, uh, the especially the Samsung phones, they just, they looked and felt Felt great and the software had also matured by that point as well somewhere around Android 6 or 7 is where it really started to be a fully fledged operating system and not really kind of feel like a beta in a lot of cases I have a lot of people still commenting here that they continue to use their Note 5 or their 6S or their iPhone SE. Comment down below and tell me what you're using right now. I'd love to know how many people are still using phones two years or older. After 2015 though, a few things started to happen. One, as we established, smartphones reached this point where they had kind of matured in both design and in use. The design language we see now was solidly in place. We had the iPhone with its little aluminum pebble design and Android versions of the same thing. The value proposition of the smartphone had plateaued. Up to that point, you were getting increasing value along with increasing cost and it kind of balanced out. But since that time, the quality of the smartphone has evened out. We're not seeing as much leaps forward in hardware. While the prices have continued to rise, and that's what's become clear now, is Apple, Samsung, and others have spent the last few years selling fewer smartphones for more money. In a recent article released by Forbes writer Stephen McBride states, in 1984, Motorola sold the first cell phone for $4,000. The average price for a smartphone today is $320. According to research firm IDC, cell phone prices have come down by roughly 92%, and yet Apple, for example, has hiked their smartphone prices by 500 in 2015, the new iPhone line cost $649 for an iPhone 6S, 16 gigabytes, 64 gigabytes was 749, 128 gigabytes for the iPhone 6S was 849. Then you go to the Plus model, 16 was 749, 64, 849, 128 was 949. The iPhone 10s, Apple's baseline flagship, I'm not counting the 10R as a flagship, this year starts at 999 and goes up to 1349 at the highest tier. And if you want to throw in the 10s Max in that conversation, it starts at 1149 and balloons up to a ripe 14. 49. In three years, the prices of iPhones have risen by up to $500. Three years, $500. Apple has struggled to sell their smartphones this year. In fact, their sales have gone down year over year, but because they've continued to raise their prices up until this point, they were seeing record profits. 
Samsung has had similar struggles. The entire flagship smartphone line didn't do as well last year and they suffered some losses. They're a much bigger company with much more fingers and much more, many more pies. So it's not the same thing as what's going on with Apple. Apple's best-selling product is the iPhone and they're kind of all in on that whereas Samsung is much more diversified. This year, they released the Galaxy Note 9 at a price point of $999 base model. It was one of my favorite phones of the year and probably of the $1,000 phones that I've experienced, and there have been now a few, the Note 9 is the only phone I would say is actually worth $1,000. Their S9 line didn't sell well and the prices have been cut over the months since its release. Right now you can get an S9 or an S9 Plus for pretty incredible deals at most carriers, but Samsung will officially announce their S10 line this coming February. And leaks just revealed today that only their S10 Lite will be priced below $1,000. It'll be nearly $900. It's hard to sell that phone at that price when you can go out today and buy an S9 unlocked at Best Buy for $569. And that's where we find ourselves in 2019. Flagship phones, not even a year old from makers like Samsung, can be had at bargain prices. And yet they are still, with their new models, pushing their prices up. Manufacturers like Huawei, OnePlus, they're releasing phones of nearly the same quality as these big boys at half the price and people continue to use their phones for three, four, maybe even five years, happily, while Apple prices themselves out of the market. We'll look back at 2018 as the year smartphones failed. It's hard to care about a new batch of phones coming in 2019 that will barely improve upon their predecessors and will be available at nearly double their price in some cases. I was curious to see what the smartphone folks brought us this year, and as the year ended, it was clear something would have to be done about the price and the rising costs if they hope to move any units whatsoever. This Samsung pricing announcement hit me hard today. If they'd have come out with more aggressively priced phones that seem to be actually recognizing what's happening in the market, then I could, I could start to get excited. But I should have known that wouldn't happen. 2018 might have been the year the smartphone boom era died, but 2019 is gonna be the year we lay it to rest. What do you guys think? I mean, is the smartphone era over? We used to be, it, smartphones have dominated the headlines for so many years in the tech space and now it seems like they've just plateaued at this place where nothing is new enough to really entice people to pay the kind of money that they're asking for. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm anxious to hear what you had to say. Once again, if this was your first time here and you want to come back again, you can do the things that'll help you do that. And if you've been here before, thank you ever so much. Thank you for coming back time and time again. I really do appreciate it. Again, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is painfully honest tech tech. So honest it hurts. Ow! Wow! Until the next time, I'm out.